Hey guys, welcome to the 11th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use arrays. So all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button, and once you have it on your form, just go ahead and double click on it. Alright, so an array is basically a special variable that will allow you to hold multiple variables of the same type. So for example, if I were to create a string array, then I could only hold strings inside of there, but I can hold multiple strings inside of it. So we're just going to go ahead right here and create a string array. So we're just going to type out string, and then following that we're going to want to put two brackets. And those two brackets basically just symbolize that this variable is going to be an array. So we're going to be able to hold multiple strings inside of this. And following that you're just going to want to put a space, and then you're going to want to give a name um, to your array. And I'm just going to call it names, since we're going to be holding multiple people's names inside of the string array. And then you're just going to want to put an equal sign and two um, empty curly braces. And then inside of these curly braces is where you're going to want to store all the strings that will be inside of your string array. So to start adding strings to our array, we're just going to want to put two quotes and then inside of here we're going to want to put the first string that will be inside of our array. And the first name that will be inside of our array is Adam, so I'm just going to put Adam. And then if I wanted to add another string, I would just put a comma and then add another string. So if I want to have Adam and Bob inside of my string, now I have that. So inside of my string array right here, I have two people's names, Adam and Bob. And if I wanted to add a third, I just put another comma and then another person's name. Now I'm just going to put Joe. Alright, so at the moment we have three people's names inside of the string array right here. To access them, what you're going to want to do is type the name of your string array, and I just called it names. So I'm just going to put names, and then uh, two brackets, and then inside of these brackets, I'm going to want to put the index of the string that we're trying to access. So if we wanted to access Adam, we're going to have to put zero, because computers start counting at zero. So the first element inside of any array, its index is always zero. So this right here, zero, this is one, and this is two. So if you want to access Adam, we're just going to put zero inside of there. Alright, and let's just display this in a message box and see what happens. So message uh, box dot show, and we should just get Adam in a message box. Since inside of our names array, the uh, string at the zero index is Adam. So we should just get Adam in a message box. Yep. And if I wanted to get Bob in a message box, or access Bob, I just put a 1 there since it goes 0, 1, 2. So I should just get um, a Bob in a message box now. Yep. And if I wanted to get Joe, I'd obviously just put 2. And I should get Joe. Yep, perfect. Alright, and there's another way to create arrays. So for example, if you just want to create an array that's empty and doesn't have anything in it, then what you can do is just say new and then whatever variable type your array is holding, and ours is strings, so we're just going to put string and then two brackets. And then inside of these brackets, we're going to want to type the number of strings or elements that our array will be able to hold. So if we want our string array to be able to hold five strings, we just put five in there. And now inside of our string array, we have five empty strings. So if we wanted to access the fourth element, which would be the last, we just put four inside of there, and um, we should get nothing in a message box since none of the uh, strings inside of our string array are set equal to something. We just simply created spots for them. So yep, we get nothing, and that goes for every single um, element inside of our string array, or every single string inside of our string array. So if we were to put zero, we'd get nothing in a message box. Yep, but if we wanted to change that, we could. So to access the zero element, we just put names and then zero. So we're accessing the string at zero. And then if we wanted to set it equal something, we just put an equal sign right there and two quotes. And then inside of these quotes, we're just going to want to put whatever we want to set um, string at zero index equal to. So if we want to set it equal to, I don't know, Joe, then now if we were to uh, show names and at the zero, uh, index in a message box would get Joe because we changed it right up here to Joe and then we're displaying the string at that index. Just debug and see what happens 
and yep, we get Joe. Perfect. And you can create arrays of different types. So up until now, all we did was strings, but you could create a bool array or an integer array or something like that. For example, right here, I'm just going to go ahead and create an integer array. So I'm just going to type int, and then following that, two brackets to symbolize that it's going to be an array, and then it will be able to hold multiple numbers or multiple integers. Then I'm just going to want to give a name to my array. I'm just going to call it um, numbers, I guess. So numbers, and then I'm just going to set it equal to um, two curly bra brackets. So inside of here, I'm just going to list all the numbers that I want to be stored inside of my integer array. So I'm just going to have 555, 666, and 777. All right, so now inside of my integer array right here, I have three numbers, 555, 666, and 777. So if I wanted to access this 666, I would just put numbers for the name of my uh, integer array right here, and then uh, two brackets, and then inside of these brackets, the um, index of the integer that I want to access. So if I want to access 666, I just put 1 in here, since it starts counting at 0, so this is 0, this is 1, and this is 2. So I just put a 1 in there, and since this is a number or an integer, we're going to have to convert it into a string, so I'm just going to do dot two string right there, and now we should get 666 in our message box. Yep, perfect. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial on using and creating arrays. So, see you guys.